Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. Geraldo Rivera was asked the question, why are there so much protest and people gathering and taking to the streets in 2016? why we didn't see these things play out in 1990 95 Geraldo Rivera response was it's the day of social media where these different groups communicate with each other he said it's like the military and then they plan their attack That was the answer Geraldo Rivera gave on Fox News this morning to the news anchor that asked him that question. And it led me to believe the reality that the fact that black people and white people will never see eye to eye on certain issues because white people are judging it from their mindset who never experienced black life and black people are looking at white people hoping that they can understand the plight of black people when white people never lived a black life they don't have the, or they don't feel the spirit or the essence of black pain. They don't, they can read the words in the book on why there is black pain. If you go back to the 16th, 17th, 1800s, 1900s, you know, to the 2000s. They might can read and they can sympathize with you uh, to a degree of, oh, damn, man, that's too bad. You know, they can do that. Uh, I say, kid, uh, yo, I seen one of your black brothers shot in the street again by a uh, white police officer. Man, that sucks, dude. That's, that's too bad. Man, you know, and that's the extent of it. And back of their mind, damn, I'm, oh man, thank God that I am not you. Is what that boils down to. But they don't understand this father has been taken from a wife, from his children. They don't understand that this family have to continue their lives without the use of a provider who provides for that family, who loves that family, who nurtures that family. He's gone due to the color of his skin by a white police officer in his mind who grew up in a small town policing in a city or in an area that's predominantly black, he has no idea. Now we're talking about the ones who do not have an idea of the plight of black people. But then you got, as Tariq Nasheed said, these race soldiers who simply dare to kill and stop the growth of the black male. So we have those on the police force. Then you have the black police officers who knows what's going on, but they have to turn a deaf ear due to the blue wall of silence and they don't want to be targeted by that same racial hate. So they keep quiet and they go along to get along. And if they want to get into the higher order of the uh, fraternal order of police, 
they might have to commit a, a, a act of crime. So yeah, we don't want to talk about uh, the serious issues, and this is going out to Geraldo Rivera because Geraldo Rivera is a lawyer. So as a lawyer, that means you have to get, gather evidence. And the reason why Geraldo got booed right after the Million Man March. When the minister went to the UN, I was there. And when they announced that Geraldo Rivera was in attendance, they booed him. Geraldo got booed. Why did Geraldo get booed? Geraldo was booed because you are a Latino. You're not Latino because you, you, you're not from Italy. Geraldo Rivera is a Spanish. Well, Geraldo, you're not Spanish uh, because your ancestors didn't come from Spain. Geraldo Rivera is a descendant of the Olmecs, which was the first people that civilized in that in Mexico, in that part, in that area. Olmecs. But Gerardo's stance is, as a lawyer, we know that your job is to gather evidence so you can defend your clients or prosecute your clients. You need evidence. So Gerardo Rivera, why don't you put out the evidence and use that lawyer mind? Why don't you say, yeah, over 400 years of slavery, and when they say chattel slavery, what it's saying is you were treated like goyim. You were treated like cattle. They put the cattle bells, two cattle bells, on your right up on your shoulders, right, left side, because you were cattle. Treated like an animal. Now, you take a, but let, let's give a scenario. Well, let me give an example, because I like giving examples so you can see where I'm coming from, because when you take the black perspective on what black people been through, a lot of white people call that reverse racism, or they call that you stirring up the pot or they get offended by it and you know and it shouldn't be that way you should vet the information study the information and see how it applies to your life or what good can you extract and if something that and if it's bad you can't extract it and put it down but don't get offended to where you want to go out and harm people for giving you their life experience and I'm a life specialist. Now, when you, now this example, and I'm coming off the top of the head with this one, so y'all bear with me. Let's say we rounded up a group of white people, took them from America to China. We changed all the white people's name to either your name going to be Saddam Hussein for the males or Bin Laden. And for the females, your name would be Saddam Hussein and Benita Bin Laden. We totally changed your name. Then we're going to change your language to, you're going to start speaking Korean. We don't want you to speak English no more. We don't want you to have a Christ English name or Christian name. We'll give you a Muslim name. We're going to give you Korean as a dialect. We're going to change your religion to, uh, to uh, what we're going to change their religion to. 
would change your religion to uh, Islam. Change all white people's religion to Islam. Right. Then we gather you up and put men, women, and children all in a barn. We're going to put a barn that normally holds 100. We're going to put three, we're going to put 400 in there. Make sure it's real nice and tight. Right. Then if I catch you speaking English, I'm going to kill you. If I, if I catch you uh, prostrating to pray, I'm going to kill you. If I catch you reading a book in the Korean language, because you might learn something about me and you might use that against me, I'm going to kill you. I'll, I'll set one bucket of water with one ladle in that bucket and all of you have to drink from that same bucket. Then I'm going to tell you you need to go out in the field and pick rice. And I want a 500 pound I give you a sack and I want, when you come back, this sack has to weigh 500 pounds of rice that you picked all day on my beach. Then I'm going to tell you, if you look me in my eye, I'm going to kill you. Then while the men are there, the white men are there, then you have people come and rape the white woman. Right in front of them. Then you have some blacks who will say, this is wrong. We need to help these white people because no one should be treated like cattle. But then you have other black people who will say, man, I've been poor all my life. In the old country, my people were uh, uh, vagabond. We had no money. Now with this white slavery thing, man, I'm, I'm able to travel the world. You mean to tell me I'm going to give up all of this for them? And the other blacks say, well, it's the humane thing to do. Isn't that what the God tells you you should do? And then I say, well, yeah, but that's true. Allah does say uh, uh, treat people fairly, be respectful of others. But he was talking to us. These whites that's in this barn, they cattle now. They three-fifths of a human being. God's law doesn't apply to them. And you like, man, you are going mad. One day, when these people, and I'm talking about the whites in the barn, become free with that mindset and their free mindset, you all are going to clash. And that's what's going on. You cannot tell me in today's time, in this society that we live in, even though slavery is over, there's no physical slavery. But there is a mental slavery. And the mental slavery is actually worse than the physical slavery. The mental slavery is actually worse than the physical slavery because you need your mind to navigate and in essence your body will heal but that mental slavery so then what happens is the whites and the born get restless some of them 
won't escape. They started plotting. They run out the barn. But you got black paddy rollers who has to come out and go kick and drag the whites back to their barn, chop their foot off, or beat them for escaping. But the whites that's in their barn, their desire to be free is so great, even though they beat, lost half of a foot, they remember freedom. So they want to escape again. So now you have the slave catchers. Now they going after the whites, dragging them back. Then you have, and this is all for Geraldo Rivera. So when he asks a question, he can be, he can, he can put it in, in two different contexts. He can put it from a black perspective, and now he can put it from what if whites was in slavery. Because we're trying to get to a solution in this thing. Okay, now, we say, okay, you know what? Black people sit at the table and say, you know, we got to stop killing our property. Technological age is coming in. We need them to learn a little more because the industry is changing so we got to have to let them read. But what we'll do is all of you poor blacks and all of you black sympathizers you're going to be what we call police officers. And if any whites get out of line, you put them back in line. And what we need you to do, because now we're formulating the police system, you're going to carry this badge. The justice that you're going to keep is to keep the black citizens safe from the white citizens. Don't give them uh, too much room to breathe. If you see a gather, if you see a gathering of uh, too many white men in one place, immediately break it up. We will not physically enslave them, but we will mentally enslave them because we need them to make all of these computer chips for this technological age, and we will work them from sun up to sundown. And we'll get this profit and we'll enjoy our lives. Now, we're gonna use the religion of Islam, but we're not gonna let them really get to fully enjoy all of it because we're going to teach them a version that will keep them dumbed down or they'll never extract the full essence of its meaning because we'll hide the true meaning of really what it's all about and we'll change some things here and there so they can't catch on but we need we need them to work for us as mental slaves And then as time goes by, black people will hate them so much or if they start overpopulating, then what we'll do is we'll kill their youth, especially if their youth is looking over at our women. We got to send the message, you stay to your own. And we stay to our own. Now, if they so happen to rally together and start getting sympathy from the public, then when we, since we control the media, when we go out on these media outlets and these stations to speak, we have to speak in the way that we are superior 
and they are so dumbed down that they really don't we have to create a situation to where we will always be in charge we can never call them men we have to call them boys or gals because if we call them men and women then we're seeing them as our equal and they could never be seen as equal to us because remember God showed favor upon us and not them so then you so Herrera Geraldo Her 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 Rivera excuse me I said all of that to say this Since you are in public view and you are a lawyer, go gather the evidence. Don't give something so simple as blaming it on social media. This thing had been cooking since the first slave was killed on the slave ship. This thing was set into motion because you have to realize you have a people that's taken from their homeland trying to understand these Europeans. Uh, if I appeal to their greater good or their nature, their higher self, their higher nature, they might see me as a human, as them. That's always the first step. You see, when somebody's in danger or something happens and they say, why are you doing this to me? What did I do wrong? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what can I do to help? The first thing the, the victim does is seek some type of... Uh, they seek a, a, a way where maybe they can uh, end the situation or they can reason. They want to appeal to to their uh, high character, to their moral fabric. Maybe if I appeal to your uh, moral fabric, moral fabric, you might uh, understand and you might can see the God in me, I see the God in you and we can work this thing out. But then when that doesn't work, then they go into, well, the law. What does the law state? What does the law uh, says about this? So they get to read. Hey man, you, you are not allowed to just take me out of my car and throw me on the ground. I am a man. I'm a human being. I have a family. I love myself. I have pride within myself. I'm knowledgeable. I'm a child of the creator. How, how are you going to just treat me with such disdain? Then that don't work. So then next is, well, maybe we take to the streets. They'll stop killing us. Maybe this racism will go away. No justice, no peace. Because there is no peace. Where there's no justice, that's common sense. But you all have to understand, black people have common sense. Like Brother Rob Muhammad says, the people are smarter than you think. You think you talking over the heads of black people? As if black people are illiterate, that they don't see what's going on? I mean, you're viewing this thing, but as I stated, if you're viewing this thing from the eyes of uh, white males or the eyes of a white person who have never been black, we're seeing this thing totally different. They have an overwhelming evidence of where they rushed to judgment and kill a black man 
for doing the same thing that a white man has done. But I, the, what I understand is white people not ready to shoot their own because hell, Billy Bob look like his uncle or his cousin or his nephew, brother-in-law. Of course, he like they wearing the he wearing the same shirt. They went got the same style. He's not ready to kill him. But he don't see you as his brother. He see you as another nigga. Hell, he don't hesitate to pop you. And the black officers who see that, they not. They don't want to lose their good job. They turn the other cheek. Walk by on the other side. So, I'm just offering my two cents on the subject. Why don't Geraldo Rivera, because it seems like he's respected, Geraldo, go back and study what led up to this act. Go back to the, the Black Codes. Go back to uh, Black Laws Dictionary. Go back in a research the Dred Scott case. Go back uh and study your history. Go back to the old mix. Go back to the Moors that were in America. Go back to how blacks was treated and what and go back and study if there were any debriefing of coming out of slavery into freedom to where they were prepared for freedom as equal members of this society. Go back to see how the economic uh, wealth was distributed in America and see is the and, and and dig up the discrimination that was in that discrimination that was in the housing. Go back and dig up this, the discrimination and then tell me what kind of mindset would that lead to if you've been discriminated against day one since you stepped foot in the in the in the Americas. Then get back with us and then when they ask you the question, you more equipped to answer it with truth and justice. And that way you don't have to feel like you got a panda to both sides. Or you, you don't have to feel like you have to say it in a certain way to where you don't want you don't have to upset a group of people. Just lay the facts out. It's Verbal Pick Radio. It's Cold Black. And I'm out.